Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Land, place of Binding Wise Gathered Plus. It's been oh so easy. I can take no credit for our five win streak here as Eden, but you know, hey, you gotta pilot it regardless, right? Stats are amazing except for HP. Y6LM TK J4. Um We obviously got a couple of a couple of weird things going on here. Our HP is bad enough to possibly get us killed. Bomber Boy also creates problems on the regular, but it also, oh my god, potentially creates solutions as well. Having these weirdo bomb synergies this early on uh, actually strikes me as probably being a pretty big advantage as long as we can stay the heck out of our own way. You know, we're going to be able to basically kill any boss on the first two floors in like one or two bombs assuming they hit plus the creep afterwards like not to mention you know just being able to access the tinted rocks that exist in the first place so I, I think it's a big advantage obviously I don't need to tell you that monster Manuel is horrible but I, I feel like we're actually um... yo that was so close I feel like we're actually in a really like deceptively good position here we can lean on our bombs for a little bit of leverage. Um, and we've got great stats. Like, the, we got the most important stats. You know, rate of fire, damage stat, both working out in our favor. We could really use, like, like meat would be pretty solid here. Growth hormones is, is good, don't get me wrong. It's not necessarily exactly what I want, but it's pretty good. Let's take the pill. I'm unafraid. Yeah, this seems fine. If anything, it, it seems even better than fine. Yo, never mind, it's horrible. Um, it seems even better than fine just because of the fact that we, uh, we've had so many kind of like super easy runs lately that just to have one that at least has a little bit of sandpaper associated with it, it's not a bad thing. How am I doing today? I'm doing well, you know? It's, uh... I've been using the thing that electrocutes your abs. No, I haven't. Obviously, that would require me to use the telephone to call the toll-free number in order to inquire more about Dr. Ho's electrical therapy system. Um, and as a millennial, I am just uh, morally and also, uh, you know, from like a limbic system standpoint, opposed to using the uh, telephone to begin with. Please jump and then be destroyed forever. Excuse me, sir. You should be on fire right now. Thank you. It's a range upgrade, and you know, it's it's a little touchy, <laughs> but it's also it's kind of like a classic play. You know, one spirit heart for a, a pretty nice DPS improvement. Oh no! Okay, it's it's all right. It's all right. I'm still feeling like very very good, but I'm also feeling. Like, we should probably go to our, um, to the shop. I mean, we got keys, unlimited keys. Need to buy a spirit heart. I was gonna say today's Tuesday. Did I say today's Tuesday? Today's definitely not Tuesday. <laughs> it's Wednesday. But my whole week is thrown into disarray because Niantic had to cancel their raid hour due to technical difficulties. How the heck am I supposed to catch a shiny Mewtwo? Well, I can just wait till later, I suppose. Um, I'm not actually mad. But I was gonna go on a little bit of a tangent and I haven't decided whether or not I should yet. But uh, there's a lot of... Niantic was like, hey, can't do raid hour tonight. There's technical difficulties. There's like five tweets out of thousands, to be fair. So it's not a high percentage of people. But there's like five tweets under that of people being like, how are you going to compensate those of us who took time off from work to be able to catch this Pokemon? And uh, I, I'm going to compensate you right here with a free lesson, okay? The lesson is don't take time off from work to play a game made for your telephone, okay? 
I understand your position, you know? I'm not saying it doesn't suck. You know, you, you thought you could rely on this thing to be available, but, uh, you know, due to circumstances unforeseen, it's not. But I think there's a valuable life lesson in there about letting, you know, a video game control a little bit too much of your mood and mental well-being. Don't shoot the messenger on that one. I'm trying to help. <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, technical difficulties happen. This is not so much about Pokemon Go, it's more about, um... I don't want to say it's about entitlement. I think it's about, you know, having like a balance in your life and, and keeping things in their right place. Because I see it, you know, if I had to pick what I think is like the most thankless job in the video gaming industry, it would not be YouTuber streamer. And I, I want to be insanely clear on that. I think we, on the whole, YouTubers and streamers get a lot of credit. A lot of, like, support, incredibly nice messages. People are like, thank you so much for doing what you do. And what I do is play video games and tell jokes. I'm not saying it doesn't have a therapeutic benefit, but, like, you know, I, I feel disproportionately rewarded for what I'm doing for sure. On the opposite end of the spectrum, community management, dude. You're not even related to the development process. And I don't say that to be a gatekeeper. But basically, you know, either the executives, or the programmers, designers make a decision, it makes a subset of the community angry, you have to take the brunt of that anger despite not being responsible for its decision in the first place. And if you ever mess up, they'll freaking crucify you. <laughs> if you ever, uh... If you ever, uh, call a gamer entitled, they'll hold it against you forever, you might lose your job, Etc. Etc. Et so your job basically as a community manager is to like yes dictate the tone of like you know how the community behaves, but also to be like a lightning rod um, for all of the criticism, fair and unfair, that a product receives. Oftentimes, I, I just don't want hemolacria, dude. That might include some kind of personal attacks or even threats. Uh, and then you just have to go, hey, thanks for your feedback. I'll pass that on to the developers. So if you're watching this and you're in community, it doesn't just have to be in games. I'm sure it happens, you know, with, with respect to other stuff as well. But, uh, you know, you, you, have my, you have my support, you have my sympathy. Depending on the situation, I like to, you know, sometimes I like to tweet a brand with some supportive stuff. Not when Wendy's is like, you know, oh, cursed spicy nuggets thesis, and then it, you know... Then I'll, I'll tweet him with the silence brand. That doesn't bother me. Um, but you know, when a, a game development studio, you know, they have to announce some bad news. It's, give them a little, just a little tweet that says, hey, you know, that sucks, but thanks for letting us know. Much appreciated. Stay fresh. I don't really want an Emperor card just yet. I just want a single HP upgrade. We could have Brimstone right now if we had that HP upgrade, dude. Anyway, I'm just saying. I'm not, I get it, you know? It, it's part of being an adult, and I mean that sincerely, is learning the lesson. You know, when you're a kid, sometimes people make special uh, uh, exceptions for you. You know what I mean? You'd be like, uh, oh, my kid's been looking forward to this for so long. Okay, fine, you can come into the theme park even though it's closed. I don't know, this is a weird... A uh, story that has never actually happened to me, but you, you're kind of used to special treatment. You're like, I'm made a sacrifice Where's my you know the the thing that I sacrificed for as an adult you just you know Sometimes you look forward to going To a restaurant all week. You're like, oh man this Friday We're gonna go to that restaurant that serves you know the the aged ribeye you spend six, seven days dreaming about that aged ribeye with the chimichurri on the side, optional dipping. You dream about it. You look forward to it. You save up a little extra cash because it ain't cheap. You get to the restaurant and they go, hey, my name's Kim. I'm going to be your server tonight. Um, just so you know, before you get set on anything, we're out of the ribeye. And you know, it's bad. You go, I've been looking forward to the ribeye, but what do you want him to do? You know, go get more cows? It doesn't make any sense. 
So instead you go, ah, fine, I'll have the elk sausage. You know what? You might find yourself having a new favorite. And if you don't, it's just one dinner. You can't make this stuff, you know, the linchpin of your... I mean, I'm just one man. But my, my personal thoughts on the subject, you shouldn't make this stuff the linchpin of your happiness. I know you didn't do it intentionally, but like, at the same time, only you can, can fight back. So we're gonna leave. I still have not gotten a single HP upgrade. It's got me a little scared. <laughs> but we don't need HP. We just need defense. That's one way to think about it. Like the relic would be an amazing get for us. Um, nine lives with our stats might allow us to do what needs to be done. So I thought this was a, an acceptable time to get something like this going. Okay, he's burning. He's burning. I don't like fighting Brownie, obviously. Oh, there we go, okay. Still not HP. And nothing we can take here. This is like, this is a, a, the kind of run that sneaks up on you. You know, you eat a jalapeno, and some of them are inert, and some of them are like spicy, but you don't realize it right out of the gate. I know, b by the way, thanks to all the in the spice inflation, people are jalapeno spicy. <laughs> Look, some of them is. Some of them ain't. You can have a, a jalapeno that, that it kind of sneaks up on you, and you can have some that tastes like green. And you can have some that tastes like green peppers. 3CEW413F. I would be madder about this run, uh, about the run we just lost, if I felt like we did much wrong. <laughs> I don't really feel like we screwed up that much. I mean, we, we took one deal with the devil that cost us a spirit heart. Then we had a bunch of, like, very dubious item rooms that we didn't take because they were just almost... I wouldn't say objectively bad. Hemolacria doesn't fit the objectively bad uh, criteria, but, you know, I think it situationally was bad for us. And uh, just no, no HP existed that I could see. So, you know, it happened. What are you gonna do? Oh, man. My random number generator selected a real bad number for me. I'm not gonna say that a better Isaac player couldn't have won that run, but, you know, it is what it is. This run already is, is popping, by the way. This is looking amazing so far. Anyway, I'm just saying, you know. If something goes wrong, it depends on what it is. Like, when people are clowning on 2K for the slot machines in their video game, uh, and you might say, and now I watched you play Borderlands 3, you were playing a bunch of slot machines. What's the difference between that and NBA 2K? Well, we were using, like, virtual money to get virtual goods. I have no problem using in-game currency to gamble. I, what I have a problem with is when you put real money printed by, you know, the U.S. Mint into a video game to get a digital good with a, you know, a slot machine mechanic associated with That's And, that, I mean, I don't think that's a, an unfair argument. We've talked about this enough that I think I've puzzled out exactly where I stand. I, I'll say it again. I'll, I, I want to be heralded as, you know, the vanguard of this when eventually public favor, you know, turns completely against the loot box stuff. I still think real life gambling is like really dangerous, but is still better than loot box gambling. Because at least when you win real life gambling, you win real money. When you lose, you lose real money. But in digital gambling, when you win, you win fake money, you win like a, oh, it's a Dwayne Wade, uh, alumnus card, and when you, when you lose, you lose real money, to, you're, you're losing real money no matter what. Or are you spending real money no matter what? That's the, you know, I guess that's the crux of the whole issue, huh? Anyway. You gotta, I'm just saying, you can't make the, the Pokemon go that much of your life. I think we have two red hearts, so you definitely want this, but we can get two for the price of one. And I know you're probably saying it's hypocritical, and now you've been talking about Pokemon Go. There's a huge difference. 
And this is where, and I have a lot of thoughts on fandom, um, because it, I mean, it greatly affects me, you know? Some of the most support and, like, positive things I have in my life, I have because of the amount of fandom that we have associated with, you know, not just the videos that I make, but the streams that we do, and etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and the, you know... I feel like super blessed to have like an active community, like active posts on, you know, two different subreddits and stuff like that. But some of the largest stresses I have in my professional life are also related to fandom as well. When people think that, you know, because they've watched a lot of our content, you know, they know uh, more than they actually do about the personalities of either myself or you know, my, my co-hosts and collaborators. And also where it gets really bad is when they think they know you know, the ins and outs of the way that we interact with each other. You know, they think that the way that we interact with e each other on stream is w like a one-to-one -one relationship of how we interact off stream. When, you know, by and large, the way we interact on stream, sometimes we, we poke fun at each other. Um, but off stream, you know, everybody's very supportive. Mostly, I mean, we're making fun of each other to entertain you. <laughs> and sort of to entertain each other a little bit, but like... You know, off camera, if somebody, you know, opens themselves up to a jab and you jab them, uh, it, it could go over wrong because there's like no benefit to it except making them feel bad, which is not a benefit at all. Anyway, but I, I, I've noticed it a lot with Pokemon Go and I've talked about it. And I use Pokemon Go not as a specific example, but rather as, a, you know, something generalizable. When you let something that was meant to be leisure become, you know, such a, a linchpin of your life that it then becomes, you know, potentially a source for toxicity. Happens in our community now and then, it is something, you know, it w probably wouldn't be fair to say I work hard to stop it, but, you know, we, we put measures in place now and then uh, to, to try to curtail it. So I get it. You know, it's rough. I'm sure up in Niantic, when they have lunch with each other, you know, they're like, why do we have so many people angry at us over these digital pets? <laughs> They're like, it's not our fault that AWS went down in the Northwest today. We had to cancel raid hour. It's just, I don't know if that's what happened. I don't know, man. You ever feel like maybe we're actually, assuming you're in the same generation that I am, more or less. Same generation or younger, let's say. So, you know, under the age of 40, maybe. We're a little bit more compassionate, maybe, than our parents' generation was. My parents are not uh, dispassionate people, but I definitely feel like um, the attitude that I've seen them have sometimes, and the attitude that I have uh, that I've seen other people their age have, is is a little bit more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Unsympathetic to cogs in the corporate machine. You know what I mean? Uh, like from a customer service standpoint, I have heard, you know, both of my parents say things like this is unacceptable before. That's something I've never said in a, in a customer service standpoint. Um, and mind you, some of those times they've definitely been right. Some of those times I, I think they maybe have overstepped a little bit, but at the same time, They've been the squeaky wheel has gotten the grease, if you know what I if you know what I mean. You know? If you're unhappy with your internet service, maybe you make a call to uh, your your internet service provider. If you're nice and sympathetic, you might not uh, get a you know one month discounted rate or something like that. Of course this assumes that uh, any internet service provider would actually give you a concession at any point, but instead because they have like an oligopoly, they'll just Say, have you tried turning your modem on and off, and then, you know, we thank you for your business, etc., etc., etc. I will say, our internet service provider has been amazing. At least in our area, our reliability has been, like, absurd. I thank, you know, the the forces of good every single day. The number of... St I, I moved here, like, to this physical location, like, four years ago. I don't think I've ever had to cancel a stream due to internet issues. And in terms, and we're, that's talking, you know, if we do five streams a week, you know, that's like over a thousand streams. This is like greater than 
percent, uh, 99.9 percent uptime there. It's kind of a, it's it's not a, it's a back of the napkin calculation is what I'm saying. Just cut me some slack on that one. Um, it's real good. Occasionally we've had some, you know, internet cutting in and out, but even that has been really rare. But I'm cognizant of the fact that every time you move, it, it's a crapshoot. Anyway. Even with, uh, you know, my stuff. And this is a preachy episode, but that's what happens. I, I'm, I'm feeling uh, melancholy because we died. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll talk about pseudo real life stuff. Even with people that watch, like, a lot of my content. People will crack jokes because I, you know, I, I try to tell people. I try to be a positive influence on people's lives. I don't have, like, a big-headed opinion of myself. I don't consider myself like a, you know... Follow this page to change your life sort of guy. But I always like to be like a little bit prodding people. Like, hey, you know, you could believe in yourself, you know? I don't want you to be working 22-hour days. You you know, if you have a goal that you want to pursue, you could probably be working towards it a little harder, right? You probably got enough people in your life that are like, ah, you know, you worked hard today. Just take the night off. Sometimes that's very important. But I'm also the guy who's like, yeah, but do you really need to take tonight off? Or are you, like, hungry for it, but you just need a little push? But regardless, you know, I tell people in our community all the time, like, to, to do stuff like that. Sometimes people are like, yeah, but if I was more productive, I wouldn't watch as much of your content. Hey, man, if that's what it is, that's what it is. I'm a productive person. I still watch a uh, decent amount of content on Twitch, at least. Uh, I just, you know, you're doing dishes, throw on a mouth stream. You're at the gym, throw on dance stream. Two different vibes. Anyway. Where am I going with this? I don't know. We did... Wait, where are... Are we on Depths 1 or Caves 2? It's, it's only frustrating for me right now to have lost that last run because we're playing so much worse on this run and just like not being punished for it at all which is awesome <laughs> but still I don't know I just I'll be the guy you know I'll be the guy who says hey I kind of feel bad for Niantic are they making money hand over fist yeah but that's not uh, that's not necessarily carte blanche to, you know, criticize all of their... I mean, here's the thing. If they were like, hey, for a limited time, egg incubators cost twice as much money. You'd be like, hey, that's kind of a jerk move, Niantic. But if they're like, hey, due to factors, you know, unforeseeable, whether or not they're actually unforeseeable, I don't know, there's always like one dude who's in his second year of programming at like, you know, University of Phoenix Online, who's like, uh, well, I don't, as a programmer myself, I don't see how this uh, game with 15 million concurrent active players co possibly could have had a server issue. I mean, why don't they plan for stuff? Blah, blah, blah. But anyway, I mean, maybe, you know, if I had William Gates here and he said something like that, I'd be like, you know what, Bill? You're probably right. Also, please stop trying to force this new Windows update on me, William. I feel for him, you know? Because we have the same thing from time to time. People are really nice about it when you're a streamer, you know? The way I see it is like, you know, I've had to cancel streams occasionally due to like illness. Largely, nobody says like, just do a stream anyway. This is, I took a night off to watch your show, blah, blah, blah. Instead, they're like, get well soon. The server is sick. Cut him some slack. Also, I don't know, man. Taking a day off work to do one hour of shiny Mewtwo raids. It, it kind of boggles me, you know? But then again, I, I want to, like, be rude to myself a little bit here. I should also, like, recognize. I There's a fallacy. I don't know what it's called. Uh, and, and maybe it doesn't even exist. Maybe I'm making it up right here because I'm at, on the vanguard of, uh, you know, philosophical and rhetorical sciences. Um, clearly. But the fallacy is thinking everybody is the same age as me online. <laughs> so, you know, when I see... 
somebody say like, well, what are you gonna do about the compensation, Niantic? I took a day off from work to, you know, catch these shiny Mewtwo's. This is ridiculous. I think of the other person as kind of like a mirror image of myself on the other side of the monitor, you know? I think that they're a, a 30 year old person. Oh, hold on. Welcome, Tomo. With a, uh, you know, a, a career that they find fulfilling and, you know, rewarding. And, uh, you know, having a healthy, you know, balance between, like, their occupational existence and, you know, their recreational existence and etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. The people tweeting that could be 16 years old. Lord knows, I, I possibly could have been, you know, one of those people where, like, Xbox Live goes down on, like, the first day of summer vacation. You tweet Microsoft, like, Microsoft, this is ridiculous. I worked so hard in 11th grade, and then on my first day of summer vacation, I can't play online video games. I could have been that guy when I was 16. So, I, I'm, you know, it's not necessarily 100% fair for me to criticize. But I'm criticizing, you know, all of this through the lens of, uh, you know, what, what my experience on making your life easier would be, you know? And take it from me, dude. All I got is one of those weirdo Mewtwo's with the Lego armor. You know, psychic. No, oh, he's called armored Mewtwo. That's all Mewtwo's are psychic. <laughs> Thanks for the tears upgrade, idiot. Anyway. You gotta keep everything in a balance, you know? Take it from the one quarter of Team Unity. We always want to play PUBG. There's always maintenance. We always complain, but you get over it. Plus, we're playing Birdlands now. Which was a good time. I'm excited to... Like, we play one week of Borderlands. It was up and down, in my opinion. But now that, you know, part of the down is that, you know, we, we had to get through the game's tutorial, and they, they're just talking to you nonstop. Now, I understand in Borderlands, they just continue to talk to you nonstop because... You know, Gearbox is afraid if they don't give you some form of, uh, you know, stimulation every 10 seconds, you're you're just going to get bored and turn your console off. But I think next week, I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to crank the in-game voice volume down to zero. We're going to banter a little bit while we mindlessly shoot enemies and vacuum up the loot. That's my opinion. Anyway. So I feel weirdly like unanchored on this run. We're going really fast. The run is good, but it's not that good. It's not. <laughs> it's not so good that I'm like, oh my god. I, I of course I expected to be fighting, uh, you know, mom. 14 minutes into it. Now we have maybe uh, speed sped up a little bit more than we had to. You know what I mean? You always give a key to the key gods. That's the luxury of, of an Isaac run. If you've died previously in the video, you get to have a little bit of the skips. You know what I mean? You don't have to go to absolutely every single room. In my opinion, at least. What would I like to see? Well, we can't get an angel deal. What I was going to say is I'd love to see the mines. I think that we have everything we need on this run except a GPS. All we need is the sat nav telling us uh, where the boss room is. Why? I saw the shadow. Sometimes I wish that instead of just ha having to use my words to explain what I'm thinking, I could give you like a one-to-one -one, um, model of like what my brain is is actually experiencing at any given moment. Is that one you would just be bewildered? I saw the shadow. I moved into the shadow, despite knowing that the shadow was gonna hurt me. I mean, there's some good items in there, to be honest, but... The whole time, my brain was going, What are you doing? Why are you walking into the shadow? You don't even have an orbital. This doesn't make any sense. And yet, uh... And yet, I did it nonetheless. Help. No, this room's fine. Now I need your help. <laughs> there we go. Ace of Clubs. I think we'd rather hold Wheel of Fortune. Anyway, it's been a great uh, few weeks for video games, dude. You know what I played yesterday on the stream? 
I mean, if you watch the stream, you, you can know the answer. There's a few right answers, but um, I played Tetris 99 again. If you want to, I, I bring this up not as a self-promotional thing, although I don't think there's any shame in that. But you know, if you if you're one of the many people who like watching me play Tetris 99, that is in the September 17th, 2019 VOD on Twitch. Uh, I believe that it will be called "It's Tuesday, My Dudes." Open parentheses, not a crawl, followed by four question marks, then a slash. Borderlands 3 later. That's the title of the stream, I believe. Great room for me there. Um, there's some sense of irony, by the way, that we got... On this run, we started with the exact trinket that would have uh, probably easily won us our previous run, but w whatever, you know? I was talking about dramatic irony in a video game Let's Play, and I was like, yeah, whatever. You guys remember that song? This reminds me, I got a bit to springboard off of, but... And I, what I was going to say about Tetris 99, just to put a cap in that, is that I don't mean to brag, but Daddy still got it. <laughs> one second place finish, one victory over the course of an hour. Still pretty good, considering we haven't played Tetris 99 in quite some time. I was very impressed with myself. Anyway, still like, it was a nice reminder to go back and be like, uh, you know, oh yeah, this is still one of my favorite games of the year. As ridiculous as the concept is. Tetris 99 is awesome. Anyway, what I was going to say is I was listening to uh, everybody's favorite online streaming music service. That's right, Google Play Music. I still don't understand. I guess I, I have to accept that as you get older, there are inside jokes that you don't understand. Uh, that might not even be at your expense, but, you know, they kind of use you as a linchpin, if that makes sense. Um, every time I, use, I say that I use Google Play Music, people call me a boomer. I don't get it. I don't know why Google Play Music is like, is boomer energy, whereas Spotify is not boomer energy. Is it because Spotify sounds like Shopify and that's where 99% of uh, Zoomers work? I don't know. See? I can be rude too. <laughs> you can actually, uh, I think you can get super successful on Shopify, so it's not even rudeness. I'll take it. I'm mad we lost that deal with the devil, but terrible. Hold on, I gotta finish this. Anyway, I was listening to, you know, whatever... You know, songs that sound like blah. And you know what came up? Cleveland Rocks by the President of the United States of America. Also known as, uh... The theme song to the Drew Carey Show. And I haven't heard that song in so long, it like instantly teleported me back to being in like 7th grade. Where all of my favorite songs were just theme songs to my favorite TV shows. <laughs> you got Cleveland Rocks. You got, um... Uh, you got, you're not the boss of me now and you're not so big. You know, They Might Be Giants. You know, I, I like They Might Be Giants okay. That's not their best song. You get, it's no birdhouse in your soul, you know. Um... But still, and then um, what was the one from that '70s show? I know it's by Big Star, but I always, whenever I think of Big Star, my brain literally can't conjure a song but September Girls. So I know that it's um, oh, wait. we're all all right, but I don't remember that. And then he goes, "Hello, Wisconsin," but I. I'm glad that we're in a more minimalistic era of TV themes. Like the Breaking Bad theme is just like, wow, wow, wow. And then the Dexter theme. You know, the house theme, of course. Even though I don't, I never really like the show that much, but. But there's something about that, like. You know, that 90s and early 2000s era of television, where if you wanted a theme song for a show, you would just, uh, you know, take a reasonably popular song that already existed, and then, you know, intersperse footage of all the main characters having fun together, but in a way that never actually happens on the show. You know I'm talking about, so no one told you life was gonna be this. <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to curse it. Well, we don't really need the shovel at all. <laughs> your job's a joke, you broke. Your love life's the old. 
Anyway, we have fun here. Um, what was I talking about? I don't remember. Really though, like, probably the first few songs that I definitely purchased legally from an online music distribution service when I was in middle school were television theme songs. There's no... Because, I mean, I, I was thinking about it today. You, you don't understand. It, it, I mean, it, and it's not your fault, but, like, if you're, like... 17 and you're watching this even if you're like 20 and you're watching this If you liked like the theme song to the Drew Carey show There was only one way you could hear it and that's like at the start of the Drew Carey show <laughs> If you wanted to hear that song without buying the album at least You would have to like wait until the Drew Carey show came on the air, you know like 3.30 p.m. Monday to Friday. And then sometimes in syndication, when it's not on prime time, they would cut the theme song so it's only like, you know, five seconds long. You know, the, they just go, hey, it's the Drew Carey Show coming up next. Cleveland rocks, da, 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 Ohio. And you're like, you ripped me off. That was my one designated daily free listen of the presidents of the United States of America, Cleveland rocks. So the, the revolution of digital, you know, music, Distribution. It allowed you to, to all of a sudden listen to songs that you wanted to listen to whenever you wanted to listen to them. Uh, not for free, but you know, like with with you being the product now, thanks to you know ads. Regardless, though, like you know, it, it's it's a huge change, man. Sometimes I take it for granted, but I, I'm straddling you know the uh, both kind of eras. You know, when I was in like sixth grade, if I wanted to hear a song, I had to call the radio station and request it. Like, and it sounds like it's from a different species, you know? Like you didn't just load up your computer and go play the song. Play the song how, brother? <laughs> Hope one of your friends burns you a CD with, uh, you know, Request Line by the Black Eyed Peas featuring Macy Gray. You ever wonder why, like, MTV got popular? It's like the same reason why, uh, like, there's only five petroleum companies, you know? If you want to get gas, they're your only outlet. If you wanted to watch music... Or, you know, listen to music, watch music videos. Your only outlet was MTV. You couldn't go watch it on YouTube. That's you know, Oh, I miss the days when MTV were just music videos. Well, it's, uh, you know... <laughs> MTV is just a, it's the, a suboptimal music uh, delivery service now. When you can just go on YouTube and type in uh, Gangnam Style. And then, you know, you can watch it six times. You can watch your favorite part over and over and over. You can leave a comment that people might see and thumbs up, you know? It's a different era now. Of course they gotta play 16 and Pregnant and, you know, the, the Bachelorette 75. It's a, it's a new era. What are they supposed to do? And what does music television do when, when their model becomes completely extinct? It just become TMZ but for musicians? I don't think you want that. I don't know what I'm talking about anymore. This I feel like I've been playing Isaac for two hours. Which is not fair because the run's actually great. <laughs> but because we've had two different runs, it feels it feels very cursed to me. There are some screams coming from the other room. Uh Kate's playing Tetris 99. That's how you know it's a good game. I would feel more uh, suspicious about saying that, like, oh, pay no attentions to the screams in the other room. My wife is uh, playing a puzzle video game. But I've already, you know, how many times have I said that now in videos? I've probably said that, like, at least 30 times over the course of the past two years. So, you know, I, I think it's an ironclad alibi. Also, if anything, I you know, if the screams from the other room are coming from something... 
you know, crime related, I have the perfect alibi. I'm in here playing Isaac right now. Officer. I just realized that's a, a good reason to continually say what day it is every time you record an Isaac video. You thought I was just doing it because I was running out of things to talk about. Wrong. I was doing it just in case I get wrongfully accused like Leslie Nielsen. Oh, excuse me, officer. That couldn't have possibly been me. Watch the Binding of Isaac uh, Afterbirth episode 1394. Parasol. I clearly state the date and time in that video. I don't think I'm in danger of being, you know, wrongfully accused of, you know, murder or something like that. But did you guys ever hear the story of that guy um, who got wrongfully accused of manslaughter? Uh, and then he was exonerated because he happened to be in the background of a Curb Your Enthusiasm episode that took place at the Dodgers game that was happening the same time the murder took place. That story... I mean, there, there's a documentary on Netflix. I can't remember what it's called. Um, I think, I'll be honest with you, I don't think the documentary is like that well-made or entertaining. But the story itself is just extraordinary. You know, this guy took his kid to see uh, a baseball game. If he hadn't taken his kid to see the baseball game, he would probably be in jail right now. For murder. <laughs> Just because, you know, he happened to bear a, a passing resemblance to the person who actually, you know, I mean, allegedly committed the murder, but I believe was also convicted. Or at least was the prime suspect, to be fair. Um... That's wild, man. I mean, that's just one of those needle in a haystack things where I feel like if it happens to you... I'm not saying you just gotta laugh, because I'm sure it's hard to have a sense of humor. But if you guys watch The Staircase, uh, it, it's maybe my favorite true crime documentary series of all time. It's really, really good. It's about this guy um, who is at the center of um, like a murder trial. He claims that his wife fell down the staircase and died. You know, the state, the prosecution claims that he, you know, bludgeoned her over the head to death. And, you know, there's compelling evidence. Let's just put it that way. The, the other thing that's wild is that um, he had another ex-wife die in almost the exact same way, like 15 years prior to the events of the, the staircase. So, I know, you know, it doesn't pass the sniff test, right? As like a logical adult human being, you're like, this guy had two wives die by saying that they fell down the stairs? Pretty unlikely, right? But at the same time, and I'm not saying he's innocent, I've watched the documentary, I have my own personal opinion, and it, <laughs> it's not that. But, uh, I guess I shouldn't laugh. But either way, I, I do, sometimes, you know, when I was watching that, I, I think about it and I'm like, man, maybe he did just have two wives die from falling down the stairs. It's, I, I'm not saying it's 50-50, but I'm saying there is a, a single grain of sand on a whole beach's possibility that this is just the world's most unlucky man in history and his, his whole defense is just like no i get it <laughs> it looks weird anyway thanks for watching i hope you guys have enjoyed the episode if you did click the like button on the radio of course subscribe if you want some more in the future for now thanks for watching i'll see you next time see ya